Hello once again, this is Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher. Do you have little beauties like this in your shop? Well, I guess just about anyone that has a lathe in their shop has some centers that need regrinding or reconditioning, and that's exactly what the subject of this video is all about. So today, using my South Bend 10 inch heavy and my Do More tool post grinder, I'm going to regrind several of these uh, centers 60 degrees. So I'm going to run through the whole setup here, which is going to be rather lengthy. In fact, the setup is going to take longer than the grinding. This is an older model Do More grinder, and it takes a 4 inch wheel, but of course the wheel is reduced in diameter a bit, so it's probably about 3.5 or 3 and 3 quarter inches right now. But try to use the largest grind wheel possible. You really don't want to do that with a little bit of a of a, a grinding wheel that's three quarters in diameter. It, it takes more than that and a little bit more horsepower maybe than a tiny little grinder mounted on uh, the compound is capable of. That's the model number of the Do More Grinder if anyone is interested. I had to do several things in preparation for the video. To start with, I made a T-nut that will fit into this compound and it has a half inch fine thread in order to hold down the tool post. Now I noticed that with this tool post grinder, I, uh, it does not have any capability of being adjusted as far as the height. So I put it on here and determined I needed a quarter inch spacer or washer to bring the center of the grind wheel up to the center of the lathe spindle. So that's what this is all about. And that certainly varies from machine to machine. So I'll go ahead and mount the grinder right now onto the compound using what I just showed you there. Now I have temporarily set the compound for zero degrees in this direction. And you'll see why in just a second here. Remember that this operation is nothing more than compound rest taper turning, but using a grinder instead of a cutting tool. I realize you can't really see the compound anymore, but the trick now is to get the tool post grinder mounted on there so that the axis of uh, the spindle here is exactly parallel or in line, alignment with the lathe spindle. That is, I don't want it just a few degrees this way or this way. So I was thinking and thinking, uh, usually that's a baguette and bagash uh, deal here when you're setting this up, but here's how I'm going to do it for the purposes of this video, and I think it's a good uh, way to do it if you're able to do it on your machine, because the machines certainly are going to vary. Now we always want to protect our spindle thread, so I'm going to use uh, this prote thread protector, but for the moment I'm going to put it on backwards, and then I will bring the face of this up against the face of the wheel, like that, and that will uh, assure that the face of the wheel, is, which will line the uh, axis of the spindle up with the machine. So I'll go ahead and put this on about halfway. I hope this makes sense to you, but the bolt here is still loose, so I'm able to swing the entire uh, grinder, and I'm going to bring the face of the wheel up against the thread protector, and that will square it up. I feel like it is in contact all the way around, and now I can tighten this bolt. Now I know this doesn't make sense to a lot of you, but I'm showing you this at a slightly different angle. If I would put a card in here on this side, that's tight, and would check it over on the other side, which you can't quite see, I feel that I have the same fit. Now I still have to dress the wheel, and I will go ahead and reverse the thread protector now, and it will stay on for the remainder of this operation. 
Now there has to be a way to hold the diamond dresser on here, at least temporarily. So here's the diamond nib right here. And I made this up uh, several years ago for one of my other lathes, but I had to modify it a little bit to fit on uh, this machine. And it's going to go into this position. And then I will tighten the bolt, which is out of camera range right now, so that it is pretty sturdy and pretty rigid. Lathe centers are, of course, 60 degrees included angle, so I have to set the compound for half of that, which is 30 degrees. And remember, it's still on zero. And now I've loosened up the two binding screws here and we'll set the compound for 30 degrees. And you're not going to be able to see it, but the, protru the protractor is right down here. I'll have to use a flashlight to get in there and get it just so and then I will lock it with the two screws okay it's tightened down securely and looking at it from this angle I will be doing all of the feeding with the compound the carriage itself will be locked and I will use the cross slide only for the depth of cut which will not be very much and the switch is right here which is a rather awkward position this is the only grinder that I have and I have three different but the other two are smaller that has a full belt guard so that makes it a little bit safer as always there is a certain hazard with any kind of machine shop work particularly with grinding so I'll be wearing a full face shield and just being very careful possibly uh, one might want to wear a respirator because there will be dust in the air but I am using the vacuum cleaner as you can see there which will suck up a good part of the grit also I am protecting the lathe bed and ways with a towel here and that should be dampened later on as we grind not so much with the dressing of the wheel because there's not many sparks with that but notice right here the vacuum cleaner and I've not really done that before but I expect that that will pick up most of the dust in review this is the diamond nib right here and I'll be moving the wheel across the nib with the compound rest and you will not see my hand doing that and then the depth of cut will be controlled by the cross feed looking at it from an overhead view you can see that I put several marks on the wheel and possibly that will help you see when the, the cut is taking place because there's not going to be a whole lot of action right here because the wheels in pretty good shape now but this will do several things. One, it sharpens the wheel, and number two, it shapes the wheel, makes it true, and thirdly, it will bring the angle of the face of the wheel truly in compliance with the angle that we are trying to cut onto the lathe center. Does that make any sense at all? Now when I do this, it's, there'll be no voiceover because it'll be loud. We got a vacuum cleaner and we got the grinder running at the same time. And remember that I am feeding this way with a compound and in and out, or I should say just in with the cross feed, but you'll see very little of that. It just will hardly be noticeable. The rags are moist, and this again is the vacuum cleaner. Hopefully, most of the swarf gets sucked up and is gone. I don't think much of that was visible in the video, but you can see the black lines from the Sharpie are gone and it, it just looks real good. So the next thing I'm going to do is to remove the 
dressing unit here and get ready for the actual grinding operation. And by the way, I don't see any grinding dust at all on the drapes here, so the vacuum cleaner did an exemplary job. This is the South Bend Heavy, and it takes a 5C collar, so it has the very large spindle, so I have to use this sleeve for a number two more taper. Now they also make one for a number three. I wish I had one, but these are the center that I'm actually going to grind. It's extremely important that you clean the spindle out and that there be no nicks whatsoever on the sleeve on the outside or the inside and that the center is in good condition here and has no nicks on it so that if you remove the center or put another center in there they will all run true. So I'm wiping everything clean and into the spindle it goes and tap it into place. I've recovered everything and remember that the cloths are slightly damp in case there would be a fire and I've moved the grind wheel up close to the actual center. I think I'll put a little bit of uh, dye or something on that so you can see it although it's pretty bad now and you can see I've got the vacuum cleaner right underneath it. Hopefully most of the grinding dust will just disappear. Again, this will be loud. I will not speak during the actual grinding. The grind wheel is rotating in this direction, so the lathe must be run in reverse, like this. And at four or 500 RPM. Also, I might add that the carriage is locked. Okay, that completes that. Looks pretty darn good. Now you don't need the points so sharp that you're going to hurt yourself on it. Just slightly warm and I was feeding in just a thousandth or two with the cross feed each time. The finish doesn't look real great but that of course depends on the uh, grit that I'm using and this I believe is kind of a coarse wheel as you can see.
Well, that's two down and two to go. I'm really surprised at how well the spark pickup worked with the vacuum cleaner. Actually, that's the first time I've ever done that, and it looks like 80 or 90 percent of the sparks and swarf went up the chute. So I was very satisfied with that, and I hope that you enjoyed that. So looking here, these are the two that I just finished grinding, and I've got several more that I'll do off camera because it's such a big setup. I just soon do all of them at this time, and then really for me that's a lifetime's worth. Now I know that you people at home aren't going to buy a grinder if you don't already have one because in fact you can buy these for 10 or 12 bucks a piece ready to use and you don't have to mess around with tool post grinding but it's an interesting operation to watch and I hope you enjoyed it. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now and I'll see you next time.